it's been a while. Um, but yes, I'm back. I'm live streaming today. Um, this will be the only live stream I do for today for those of you who are sort of used to me doing two live streams. Um, I have to find a job, so uh, this isn't going to pay the bills, so I have to tone down what I'm doing. And I won't necessarily live stream every single day. Okay. Right, so today we're going to talk about adventuring gear. So I've been working my way through this fairly fairly quickly. We're going to talk about rope. There's quite a few different uses for rope. So for those of you who were expecting a really short video, I can tell you now this is not really a short video. There's so many different uses for rope. So therefore, you're going to get quite a lot of different options that I will present to you, some of which are very limited and sort of you know very specific in terms of the circumstances um, I will put the start time for this video down in the description for those of you who want to get past all of my waffle uh, but it will go unlisted hi how's it going Matt as a general rule what I do with my live streams if you haven't been part of my live streams before is I present everything first and then I open it up for questions and answers near the end and I'm going to follow the same process as I always have, since that seems to be working for me. And I can see that there's a few people jumping into the room. So we're going to get started, work my way through here. Um, you will see my face at the end of the live stream, but I'm probably going to use just a bunch of still images for this video. Okay, all right, here we go. So I'll get rid of my earplugs. Sound seems to be working fine. It's been lots of updates with Windows uh, 10 and uh, it's been driving me nuts. I can't, half my software doesn't work anymore, which is just ridiculous. But <clears throat> you've got to just work through it because everybody else has got the same problem, right? Okay, let us, uh, let us start. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5e. And as it happens, the topic for today is about adventuring gear. For those of you who have been watching the series, I've been working my way through the different types of advent adventuring gear you can use. So using rope in Dungeons and Dragons 5e. There are a few adventuring items that, uh, that can compete with rope. Just a few. Actually, that's a lie. Um, there really isn't any piece of adventuring gear that can compete with rope. It's got that many different uses. And I approached the Dungeons and Dragons community on Facebook and asked them to provide me with some suggestions. I got 350 comments, some of which I paid attention to, and some of it which I have included in this video, uh, and some which aren't really suitable for public consumption. Anyway, here we go. So the first thing is, very obviously, you can use it to tie up your enemies and monsters once you've captured them, particularly if you don't want to kill them and you want to interrogate them later on. You can use it for creating a snare or a trap of some kind, usually just a loop in the ground with a, um, a trip line, which allows them to be pulled up into the tree, something like that. Another really helpful use is when you have to deal with a river. When you're going to transport yourself from one end of the river to the other end, you can use your rope in combination with uh, bamboo or logs or tree branches, tie it all together and create and build yourself a, a raft which will allow you to sail without having to walk or use uh, mounts from one location to another using that river. You can use it as a lasso if you're really good with a, with a lasso maybe you can capture your enemies or capture a, a steer, a beast and then have it for dinner if you really want to. You can also use it for if you tie a rope to the end of the, a tie a rock not a rope why would you do that? So you tie a rock to the end of the rope and it was used to measure depth or distance in water. So you can check the water depth by dropping the rope that's on a rock or some sort of weight that you've attached to it into a pool of water or into the sea or ocean to determine the depth below your vessel as you are traveling along um, your watery grave. No, it's not going to be a watery grave. Not at all, not at all. You can use it to make a rope dart, and I would tie something like a dagger or a piton to the end. A dagger is probably going to be more useful, but if you have like a spearhead and you've got a loop in it, then you can tie that to there. And if you're the sort of person who uh, wants an improvised weapon, 
a rope dagger can be kind of useful, particularly because it's got a lot of reach. You, got to, you can swing it out quite a long way and then bring it back. It is one of the most commonly used tools, rope, for crossing a fast flowing river. So one person is tied onto the rope, the others hold the other end, they cross the river, making all of the, um, taking all of the risks, get to the other end. If they start getting pulled down the river, it doesn't matter because the rest of the group can then pull them to safety back onto shore. So it's a very, very smart idea. And if they get to the other side, they can tie off both, both ends of the rope and then everybody just uses the rope to cross this fast moving river. So hugely useful in many, many different ways. Okay, so you've got a pair of pants and they keep falling down. Well, a piece of rope you can use as a belt to keep up your pants. You tie it around there, around your waist, and it's now gonna keep you up. Fantastic, we'll go with that. You can form a rope chain or line or link to each party member so they don't get separated. Now this is useful if you're traveling, say, um, in a dark location or in a maze location and you're worried that uh, people will be separated either because of illusions or because of the environment being very difficult to see in. So tying each other together um, could be quite useful. I have found as a general rule that tying the party members together has on occasions been useful and other occasions resulted in tremendous problems uh, which actually have resulted in characters going down. So it can go both ways. You can take that rope, soak the rope in oil and use it as a fuse if you want to make something explode. Um, a rope is a really good tow cable, so you can use it for pulling a sled, a carriage, a boat or an animal um, out of muck or through water or a variety of cross snow, all those sorts of things. So ropes are always useful for that sort of thing. Uh, when you combine a rope with a pulley, you can use it for lifting heavy objects or creatures. And then of course, you can then use that pulley system to shift uh, the heavy weight much easier than you could be before. Now for those of you who are sort of prone to smoking, if you're really desperate and you've got hemp rope, I suppose you could smoke the hemp rope if you're desperate. I don't think it's going to taste very nice and I don't think it's going to be the best smoking experience if that's the sort of thing you're into doing with your characters. But you could always give it a go. You can use the rope to set up a trip line. Now not a trip wire because the, the rope is going to be far too thick but provided that the location is um, heavily obscured or it's darkness there's a good chance your enemies might fall over the trip line if you set it low enough and uh, you know the area is obscured in some way. You can use your rope to tie a drunk party member onto their horse so they don't fall off. Or if you're really, really tired and you, you're riding for a long time, then tying yourself on. Um, I think we've probably seen this in a couple of different movies for those of you who watch lots of movies. I'm pretty sure it's been done a number of times. Okay, one of the most obvious ways of using the rope is for the spell rope trick. You need a section of rope for that. And therefore, really simple, make sure you have a piece of rope, make sure you cut the rope before you need to use it. You don't want to be doing this in the middle of the adventure or in the middle of combat, so make sure you've cut your rope already for your rope trip. Um, rope, rope trip. Okay, what about swimming, swinging across a gap? So when you want to board um, another ship swinging across or you want to um, swing across a crevasse or a, a section um, where there's just no way you can jump it, then using a rope might be useful, particularly if you have a grappling hook at the other end and you can swing it and snag it onto something or you've already fastened it off in some way through either magic or maybe you've sort of like got some of the means of um, securing it. Securing it at the top and then allowing you to swing across that gap. You can use it for tying supplies onto your mule so that it doesn't wind up getting lost or dropped off or falling off. Um, you can tie a bell to a rope and set up some sort of alarm system so that that trip line, uh, when it's tripped, setting it up around your campsite will uh, be, be knocked and of course it will activate the bell and then you'll be able to hear somebody who's trying to sneak up on your campsite and do some sort of horrible thing to you, which of course no dungeon master has ever done, surely not. Uh, what about using your rope, uh, tying it onto a harpoon and then now you have a harpoon line and you can go shark fishing. 
don't ask me what you would use for bait. There are probably many different things you can do. I would suggest going with blood. I wouldn't use your uh, party members if you can help it, but these things do happen sometimes. You can use it as a safety line when you're walking along a ledge. So one of the biggest problems when you're um, trying to scout across a ledge is the chance that somebody might fall. Now I know what people are going to say, well Fred, yes that's all very good, but if one falls they're going to drag everybody else off the edge and then somebody's going to wind up having to cut the line and it could wind up causing more problems than it's worth. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that the people who are more likely to be able to support the weight are in the right place. And it's not a stupid idea as you're using a line to connect each other to make sure that the line is also from time to time secured uh, via a uh, piton onto the wall where you are. So you can tap it in and then as you slide along um, you remove it, unhook it, pull the piton out and continue on. And so there you have a backup system just in case somebody falls off the ledge and then you're worried about the entire group being pulled to their death. You can use it to tie a door closed. Now this is really only going to be double doors with, that have a doorknob or door handle in some way that you can tie it around, but that will help tie it up. That way it'll give you time to escape when you need to run from the enemy who are vastly outnumbering you or just more powerful than you. Uh, you can wrap it around your hands and arms to add protection, uh, either when you're fighting or when you're dealing with some sort of uh, natural hazard or unnatural magical hazard of some kind. So it would add a little bit of uh, protection to you so the rope gets burnt before your skin. Uh, you can use it to pull a door open from a distance so you tie on the rope onto the doorknob and then you get further away because you know if you think there's a trap there an evocation spell or a ward and you want to open the door without getting blown up and you don't want anybody there that might actually be the easiest way to do that when you want to actually open the door so get out of the danger zone so using it to pull open a, a door. It uh, can be used as an improvised harness for a mount. You can lash tree branches together. So if, if you're out in the wild, you've got no tent, lash those tree branches together that you've cut down and you can create a shelter, a bivouac of some kind, allowing you to protect yourself from the elements, the weather, that sort of thing. Uh, if you are in a position where you need to get from a high location to a low location, you may be able to set up yourself a flying fox zip line so you can have a quick escape. So you then tie it on to your high location, you have it uh, tied off um, down the bottom where you went to, to finish your line and then of course you can use a belt or some other item to uh, use as a way of don't use your hands, you're going to wind up with no skin on it. Obviously you need to have something that isn't going to wear through the rope and isn't going to wind up breaking. So um, a, a sturdy belt around your um, uh, waist or maybe just uh, a couple of lengths of rope that have been linked together and just double it up or triple it up in some way. You can use it to make a splint. For those of you who have injured characters and your dungeon master is saying look it's going to be very very difficult for you to get from one location to another without um, doing something with your, your injured um, character and you don't have any healing spells, well this is a good time to form a splint. So get a couple of pieces of wood, uh, nice and straight and then tie it on with your rope. You can use it, now this is a far, fairly far-fetched, but we're playing Dungeons and Dragons, it's fantasy anyway, right? You can tie an arrow onto your rope and shoot it across a gap, a chasm, um, chasm, a space, a gap, whatever, and allow you to hopefully, if it's strong enough, um, hook onto something and then you can then create yourself a, a uh, another zip line or um, a support so you can clamber along it. If you're the sort of person who likes a tight rope then I suppose you could also use it as a tight rope uh, and cross one, one point A to point B where there is no space to actually stand. Uh, tie on a crowbar or something that's heavy onto your rope, throw it down a passageway and pull it across there to detect traps. Now I've kind of talked about this option before in previous videos with a different item. It's just sort of like a follow-up if you ask me. You can use, now <laughs> these last ones are a little on the odd side. For those of you who are wondering, Fred, they're starting to get a little bit strange. Well these last three, no I'd say the last two, are a little bit on the wacky side. So you can use it to make a noose if you decide that you must hang somebody. I, I don't know why you would want to do that, but if there's some sort of 
dark sort of fantasy that you have to fulfill and you've decided that hanging is necessary, then of course you need a rope to be able to create a noose and then you just need a high location to tie it to and then it's, uh, it's hanging type. Um, you can also use a length of rope as a strangle line or a garrote particularly if the sort of individual who doesn't want to use a dagger and they feel that, you know, by using the garrote they won't be able to talk or speak or make noise rather than sneaking up from behind and stabbing them in the back, you're going to use your garrote or your length of rope. Okay, and of course there is the most obvious way that you can use a rope if you absolutely must and that is you can use a rope to climb up and down a mountain, a wall, a cliff if you absolutely must. Now, if you're going to do that sort of thing, make sure you have a rope and a grappling hook or a climber's kit is probably much smarter because you then you get the benefit of having a harness and pitons and there's a lot of extra safety features involved in using something like a, a climber's kit rather than just a standard piece of rope tied off at the end. Now, one of the things that uh, has probably been discussed more than a few times at my table and at uh, other Dungeons & Dragons groups and that is when you get your rope it's actually much easier to climb the rope if you knot the rope. Now here's the thing, if you're going to knot the rope it's going to make it shorter so you need to make sure once you've knotted the rope that you have a talk to your dungeon master and say look how long is my rope now because you might need a number of sections of knotted rope to be able to get 50 feet down whereas a, a length of um, 50 foot rope is probably going to get you about 50 foot down or up uh, even if you tie it off there's only going to be a little bit of rope not there probably um, more than enough that you can cope with the drop um, at the end so or the you know getting onto the rope in the first place so these are all the ideas that I thought you might find useful for the use for the rope in your Dungeons and Dragons game um, I have hundreds of videos for players and dungeon masters which you are welcome to go and check out. I actually have a series on how to use adventuring gear in Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Now it can be applied to other versions of Dungeons and Dragons um, so you're welcome to go and check out that playlist. I have quite a few items there that you might find useful. Now if you want to support the channel so I keep doing videos like this then uh, I have a Patreon page. Uh, I also have uh, affiliate links down in the description to the book depository and Amazon uh, and buying stuff there supports the channel as well. I also have a merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos where you can buy merchandise from me. Now make sure to share, like and subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos and I go live and I publish quite a few videos and hey till next time keep rolling those 20s. I'm not gone, <clears throat> I'm just um, having a drink of water and um, we'll transition over to my face so we can have a chat. Let's have a look in the, uh, the chat box. Might be a bit quiet, I know I've been away for a while but I just, I needed to take a break and I needed to reevaluate my situation and um, it's quite clear to me now for those of you who want to know, um, I'll say it very quickly, there's no way I can make a living on uh, on the internet on YouTube and um, I also found that I wasn't enjoying myself I was actually finding too much content to produce and it, it was it was losing its flavor so I think it's best that uh, my YouTube channel remain a hobby and I will do videos when I can um, Windows 10 I'm prob probably all of you know this already but so many of my pieces of software do not work I had to ditch Movie Maker, it doesn't work anymore, so I can't edit videos. I'm having to look at other options. Okay, let's have a look at what we have in terms of questions and answers. Maybe you've got some something else you want to add to the uh, video. Um, root shot. How's it going? Uh, paint the rope green and people will think it is a scary snake. Ah, this is called the rope trick. <laughs> this does not work against Yanti. <laughs> okay, oh, well maybe it... I hadn't actually thought about that, but actually it's a good point. If you wanted to um, hide the rope so it's harder to see, particularly if you're using something like a, a trip line for your enemies, having the rope a colour that sort of matches the environment would be very, very useful. So painting your rope or colouring it, dyeing it, you could dye the ropes, probably a smarter idea rather than painting it. That could all be um, work quite well. Pardon me, I just need some glasses just to help me see. Today I apparently have my eyes are not quite as strong as they were before. 
Uh, Derek, how's it going, Derek Lee? Hey, Fred, good to see you back. Thank you for your great videos. You're welcome. Um, I, I really have found it amazing that so many people have subscribed. Um, and I mean, subscriptions aren't really the, the be and end all. But I do appreciate that there's been some very, very um, positive and helpful and, and uh, inspiring comments from people who've been watching my videos. And I have responded to quite a few of those. And I'll try to keep doing that as much as I can. Okay, how's it going, Sector Black? A few days ago, my players um, encountered a roper on a cave ceiling. Oh dear. Um, the barbarian tied the um, rope of climbing to a javelin, harpooned the roper, and managed to yank it down to the floor. It then got wrecked. I bet it did. Um, how far did they have to throw the javelin? Did you, because, you know, tying a rope to a javelin makes it much harder for the javelin to fly. So, I, I mean, for me, it's a great idea and I'm glad they were successful. But I would always think, this is why I'm always um, not so much of, uh, the, not the person who says, you know, tying a rope to an arrow and firing it. Because how do you fire an arrow that's tied, um, that's got a rope tied to it? Um, if we if we forget about real world mechanics, it works fine. Um, but yeah, logistically, it, there's some problems with it because it's, there's a whole lot of extra weight as well. Uh, and the same thing applies with a javelin. If you've ever thrown a javelin, having something tied to it, unless you are throwing the um, the javelin down or it's got some sort of firing mechanism. So you know when you go harpooning whales, well, let's not say that that's a good thing to do. But you know we know that it happens. Um, they have a firing mechanism so that even though they've got a rope um, or line attached to the harpoon, um, otherwise the harpoon the harpoon can't travel very far. You've got to get pretty close. So same thing would apply with a javelin or a, an arrow, I would imagine. So maybe halving the distance would be more sensible. You know, uh, instead of the javelin traveling, I think it's 30 feet, you'd go 15 feet with no penalty. And after that, um, the rest of it, you halve the, uh, halve the total total distance that it can fly and that the rest of it's going to be a disadvantage or something like that. But you do it as you um, see fit. I am not your dungeon master, you make those final decisions. Big kid, um, drinking and eating, um, but saw where, saw, saw you were live streaming. Can't <laughs> catch you later. You're, you're, it's all right, big kid, totally, man, look, it's all going to go back up. It, it just taken me a little bit of time to process it. Um, okay. Anton, how's it going? I like the rope um, used as a, a camp early warning system with um, audio. Um, say a bell or pots, yes, pots and pans, cups. Um, even if you tie together um, a few of your pitons, if you've got a climber's kit or pitons in your pack, that'll jingle together when somebody knocks the line. As long as you, of course, you tie it onto the line in such a way that it, uh, small movements will allow it to, to shift back and forth. So an alarm system is a really good idea, right? And it's a simple one. You don't have to worry about having a thin line. Uh, not really that necessary at night, although just about every creature seems to have dark vision but let's remember dark vision does not give you perfect sight so there's still and you have disadvantage um, if you're in darkness with dark vision on perception checks so disadvantage means if you're using a um, you know a passive perception you're going to have minus five to that and if they're making an active roll they're going to have to roll two dice and take the lowest result i think a lot of people forget that you know even though you've got dark vision and you're in a dark location every time you make a perception check you are, you've got disadvantage taking place. So there's a good chance the rope might not actually be detected. Um, okay, let's see what else have we got here. Sector Black. She had to throw at about um, 45 feet up and I made her do it at disadvantage. Makes a lot of sense. You're an experienced dungeon master. At this point, experienced dungeon master, I mean, most of the people here are really experienced dungeon masters nowadays. Um, also, she's wearing gauntlets of ogre power. Ah, gosh, I remember the ogre power um, gauntlets. <laughs> it is, it is, uh, it is one of those items which um, changes the balance of power, particularly for a caster, in the most amazing way. Um, yeah, certainly, really, really useful in a situation like this. I tend to let mechanics um, slide a bit. Yep, 
from time to time for the sake of narrative and probably just for the sake of it fun and they came up with an idea that didn't involve them just looking at their character sheet and reading off okay this is my character class ability or my race class ability and these videos are all about trying to get your players and you as a dungeon master so if you are a player try using some of these different possibilities and options that I've presented. If you're a dungeon master, try to be open to the players trying some of these things out um, and you don't necessarily have to tie a dice roll to it. Some things you should be able to do and it just works uh, just because it was a good idea. <coughs> okay, I just need a drink of water. It's getting nice and warm and hot here in New Zealand apart from yesterday. Um, and uh, that the result is the sun is out and everything is starting to <laughs> come unattached again. Uh, I remember these days. What fun, what fun. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's it's rough if you just tell them flat out um, they can't do it. That sort of, you know, that'll shut them down from trying things, won't it? Um, Akira and the Angel. I think I got it right. Um, what's the best magical rope with D&D. &D. Well, I don't honestly know. I, I know there's a couple of different ropes you can get access to. I think there's only maybe one or two um, in the Dungeon Master's Guide for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. And if you're talking about all of the versions of Dungeons & Dragons, I probably wouldn't be able to answer that question. Sorry about that, Angel. Uh, Nick, hi, how's it going? Always seems to you... Okay. Always seem to use the alarm rope system in uh, Goblin Dens as they usually um, hidden fairly well. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have access to the alarm spell, then rigging up a line to act as an alarm system is a good idea, right? Uh, <laughs> talk to the text is butchering this. Yeah, well, to, to be fair, usually this part gets cut. You know, uh, when I cut the video down, I'll cut all of this away. Um, yeah, no, no, it's all right. I got the you got the point across, Sector Black. I understand. Derek Lee, how's it going? I'm not. I'm not. Um, I was. I'm not. I was using your guides for Lost Mine of Found Elder. I'm running it this week. I'm super inexperienced. Ah, so so Derek, I'm glad that the Lost Mine of Found Elder Dungeon Master guides have been useful to you. That's really good. I'm glad to hear that, and I hope that your game goes well, particularly if. Um, you're running this, are you starting this weekend? If you're starting this weekend, my advice to you is out of everything else, just try to relax and have fun and have your players have a good time as well. As long as everybody's having a good time and you feel like you aren't being bombarded and it's an unpleasant experience, you'll come back and do it again. Um, but anything that you do and anything that you set up for yourself that uh, is going to make you have the, I mean, you, everybody gets those butterf butterflies and that's that funny feeling in their stomach um, quite often when they are dungeon mastering. I know it, would, it happened to me many, many times for years uh, before I sort of settled down and, you know, as a general rule, I was sort of relatively relaxed about the whole experience and realised that I, would, I didn't have to do all the work. There were other people at the table who were part of the game as well. Solomon, Solomon, how's it going? Um, I unintentionally created an encounter when my players tried to lower their, their centaur co companion down a well in the sunless citadel <laughs> using a rope and pulley system. Skeletons were waiting at the bottom. Well, that can ha often happen. You, to be fair, when you lower somebody down a hole, they are always at risk. So whoever's lowering them down, that's great. Um, do that. But the rest of the party should be standing at the top and using ranged weapons to cover them just in case they get attacked. And there's also the necessity of having to pull somebody up if they are in a bad situation as they're climbing down. You might have to, they might be climbing down, but you need somebody at the top pulling them up uh, just in case there are monsters at the bottom of the hole or at the bottom of the climb when you get to the end of that rope. Um, how many players does it take to form a counterweight? My, my suggestion to you is try to avoid thinking in terms of real world mechanics. Um, a counterweight, usually when you think about a scale and for it to be balanced, right, as a counterweight, is you need the same amount of weight on both sides. 
So if that's what you're doing, that's probably the best guess, okay? Don't get too caught up in that, but remember, scales, you need equal weight for it to be balanced, and that's your counterweight. Um, that still means that you, you apply force at one end of that weight, it will move. It can move up, it could move down, provided there's something to push up against or push against. Hi Scott, how's it going? Uh, do, 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 do. I ran a terrible version of uh, Rashak, Rakash, Ra, I'm not sure what that is, from Advanced Dungeons and Dragons once. I wouldn't worry about it. You're welcome, Derek. That's all cool. Okay, so look, this has been my video on um, how to deal with uh, rope and what you can use it, and I hope it has been useful to you. Um, there will be no live stream um, after this for today. Uh, there may be a live stream tomorrow, I can't promise you. Um, if I am able to get my software working and I find time, um, I will put up a video. Uh, I think I've, I've edited a video called Modifying Monsters But Not CR. So that probably should get released at some point, hopefully. I feel like hemp rope is pretty heavy and I actually prefer silk rope over hemp rope, but it's more expensive by 10 times as much. So, well, just about 10 times as much. I think it's 10 times as much, something like that. It's pretty close. It's more expensive anyway. Um, so that's sort of what's going to be happening. Um, you'll find that uh, if I can, I'll try to do five videos uh, during the week um, or less. Probably not going to be doing one every single day. Okay. Silk rope is very flammable. Yes, it is. So it makes a great um, fuse. So if you soak it in oil and then try to light it, it's probably going to be, yes, it will be very flammable. Um, hemp rope, yeah, well, but see, the, here's the thing. Whether it's silk rope or hemp rope, if you soak it in water, it makes it stronger. You know, rope gets stronger if you, if you wet it. Don't wet it with oil. <laughs> wet it with water and it will get stronger because it is wet. It will, as long as it stays wet, it's quite strong. And the same thing would apply to hemp and to, to silk. Although I think hemp expands a bit more and becomes a bit stronger. Wondershare editing um, software, super cheap. Yeah, see, no money, no money, mate. Um, sorry, Angel, I can't pay for it. I just can't. Um, so people have told me about all sorts of things that cost money. I bought software that cost me money. Um, Sony Vegas, I bought that. But it's, it was just, it takes so long to render anything. And it cost me money and I didn't really use it and it was it was not nearly as simple as I wanted. I wanted something that was nice and simple, just cut it together, cut out the bits I don't need, put it together and it's done. Um, so yeah, but thank you for the advice anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna take off, I've got other things to do. I've got an appointment very shortly at about 1.30 that I need to go and uh, talk to somebody about my CV. So if you found this useful, great. So wherever you are in the world, uh, and the, whether it's morning, day, night, look after yourself, your family and your friends. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.